Yes, we are online. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, welcome to a new hashtag playing together. Hello, we are the Southern Nod, and we have a new guest today, Katie. Hi, Katie. Hello. Where Thanks for you? having me. Where are you now? I'm in London in the UK right now. Great, great. How, how's the situation there? I mean, I'm just going to stay positive and say it's cold and sunny, which is like the nicest weather in my opinion. And I've just been for a nice walk in the park. So pretty good. Okay. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's a very positive thing. <laughs> I will not comment. <laughs> great. <laughs> Thank well, you so you, much for being you, here. Can you tell us something interesting and curious about yourself? Um, I... My hobby outside of improv is is knitting. So yeah. at the moment, I'm in the middle of my first self-designed cardigan. Wow. And, and I've gone very wrong and had to go back and undo a bunch and do it again. <laughs> I like cardigans. Just saying. Mm. Keep in mind. All right. <laughs> Just wait about five years. That's how long it's taking me. <laughs> is that something? Um, at that you, point. Is that something you recently picked up doing um, because of the lockdowns and everything? Or is that a... Um, I was trying to do it to replace fiddling with my phone oh, because you think. can't you can't do both. No. So I maybe started it about three years ago, but yeah, I've gone into overdrive now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. When I when I'm sitting in the living room at home, I'm always fiddling on my phone too. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So I should do something like that. Perhaps it's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. I've also got a Rubik's cube, but I can do it in like a minute or so now, so that doesn't really Ooh. help. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have those Rubik cubes, which are not cubes, but they are round or all different oh, shapes. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, that's cool. That's something. I haven't I haven't gravitate uh, graduated to anything more than your standard cube. It's actually more boring than you'd imagine, because yeah. I think if you haven't done one, you think people like being really clever and solving a puzzle yeah. you're not you learn a bunch of moves and then you repeat those moves until you can do them quite quickly okay that's it yeah. you learn an algorithm <laughs> I, uh, I never succeeded in solving I did. <laughs> no. No. Have a Rubik's cube. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right everyone the show's cancelled we're all going to learn how to do a Rubik's cube yeah. i'm so sorry yeah katie will tell us the algorithm <laughs> <Do one>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, Katie, we are going to play a little story, the three of us. It's on a suggestion, uh, and I'm using a line from the Meissner book, which I still have not finished. But because um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want any spoilers for your improv suggestions, oh, no. I guess. <laughs> um, can you give us a number between 100 and 200? Um, 76. Between oh, 100 and 200. <laughs> Sorry. 176. 176. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My brain got... <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and that's a very good one, which I just experienced. The line is, I lost the words. <laughs> okay. I lost the words. Okay. So that will be the, the, the suggestion for the inspiration and after the story uh, we will have a chat with you about the things you do in improv and things you like and your projects that's uh, the idea so uh, everyone so welcome now to the sudden knot with katie and i lost my words <laughs> again <laughs> you lost your words again <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> uh, sorry about this. I'm just I'm just trying to think exactly how to phrase it, Lorraine. You know it's it's a big press conference, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. How are 
are you, Lorraine, by the way? I don't think I've ever asked. Uh, uh, is this... Uh, how am I, uh, like, for real? Uh, is, is this, like, a challenge? I, 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 ha, is this a test? Or... Good, good question. I just... I think I just realized that you're also a human. So I'm wondering how you are. But this is, this, this is a part of your speech, right? Oh, no, 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 no. It's not the speech. I, sorry. Yeah. Let me get back to the speech. I'll, um, if you could. Oh, okay. So I'm going to address the whole crowd. Um, time. No, I don't like it. Scratch that. Um, but like, do you have hobbies and things? Do you do you hang out with people? I know your work day is long. I mean, what do you what do you do? You have hobbies? This is not the this is not uh, the speech, Lorraine. I just wanted to. I, I got some feedback from the press. I mean, I'm sure you saw it when you were sorting all my stuff. But um, it said that I wasn't very human you know, that I didn't really connect with my people. So I'm just starting with you. Okay. My Who name, are you? My name is not Lorraine. Oh, I'm so sorry. What is it's it? Sarah. It's like very easy to, to remember, Sarah. <laughs> okay, that's a, that might be a bit much for me, so I'm just going to keep calling you Lorraine. But it's good to know. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> great. <laughs> yes. Hobbies. Uh, I um, I like rabbits. <laughs> to eat or no no no. So I would go to uh, you know a store. Uh huh. Pet rabbits. To, like touch them. Yeah, touch them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that this is inspiring. This is inspiring for the speech. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Sarah. Whatever. Um, so we, we all need connection. We all need comfort. We are here today to celebrate that comfort. So we need it. We have it. We celebrate it. Oh, that's great. You're, you're incredible at speech writing. That's yeah, that's, that's perfect. So do you have like a boyfriend or a girlfriend or, or I married i have three children oh that's who they are the ones that come to the office yeah <laughs> right uh -huh. bring your children to work day <laughs> yeah 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 i was too busy to worry about why they were there but that makes sense thanks okay um all right uh this is a turning point for us we don't know the right direction we can only choose one direction and commit to that direction now that sounds too faffy yeah i'm not sure that they're going to believe in that julie i'm sorry but we have to do a walk in the park like we usually do so can you please yeah we have to do that walk in the park at three o'clock we do that every okay. day. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm waiting for you. All right, I'll be right out. Okay, I will continue working on your speech. Thanks, uh, Lorraine or Sarah. Sis. Sarah. Sis. Yeah, feels I weird. Know. Feels weird to say yeah. it. I don't look like Sarah. <laughs> Sarah. No, I mean, you look like a Lorraine. Your parents were, they got it ah. wrong, you know? Yeah. Just one thing. Who was the person who wanted to go for a walk with me? I've just forgotten his name. Just like a second. Julian. Julian. Ju Julian. Thank Julian. you. Yeah. Thanks, Lorraine. I'll see you at the same time tomorrow. See you. Bye bye. It's difficult to be an android. It's hard. 
I'm a servant, Android. I serve. So this is the model we're working with at the moment. Um, as you can see, it's a bit um, doomy, like a little bit on the depressing side, but we're really working on that. So if there's any features you want to add to the model, then then we can work them in. Is there anything particular you, you wanted to install in the Android? Ho hope. Okay, yeah, let me just uh, put some hope into the Android and just see if that changes how they respond. Okay, running program. Mm -hmm. How about sense of humor? Yeah. Okay, like a like a jokey, funny. Yeah. Just an Android that appreciates humor, that kind of thing. Uh huh. All right. Yeah. Sure. All right. Let's just put that in. Okay, run program. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks it looks a bit disturbing to me. Are you? Are you cool with this? I mean, it's your... It kind of looks... Um, I don't know. Stupid? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so... <That's> <laughs> we can keep the humor, but dial up the yeah. intelligence. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, very smart. Okay, yeah, I'm just messing with the faders, like, right now. Okay, so we've got... Um, an appreciation of humor, but not too much like broadcasting of it. Got a lot more intelligence. How about feelings? Hate, love. Do you want an Android to have hate? Sure. Just. I mean, I'm just saying percent. that's what happened. Huh? Two percent. Two percent. Okay. Yeah. I'm just just mentioning it. I mean, you're the client. You're always right. I'm just saying it because that's how we lost the first Earth. Well, that's fine. We just put a lot of hate in Androids no, and no, then... No, no, no. <coughs> just a little bit. I need the, the hate. Okay. 2% hate. One program. Why I'm are here, you doing that here. to me? Why are you doing that to me? I hate humans. They use us as servants. Uh, maybe, we are maybe, maybe a little bit less. Huh? A little Slaves bit less. are we? Uh, turning down we the hate. 0.5% point, point hate. Perfect. And fear, fear. Fear. Yeah. Okay, uh, I just have to specify what um, the Android is afraid of because it, if it's general fear, they may malfunction. So if you have a couple of things you'd like them to be afraid yeah, of. Fear yeah. of starvation. Fear of starvation. Yeah. Great. Um, cool. They're going to be feeling that the whole time because we have nothing we can feed them. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Great. Um, there we go. Starvation in there. <laughs> and he cannot eat. <laughs> that's so funny. Truly, I'm, 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 so, I'm so hungry. I I need to have something, Julie. Please, give um, me something. Or I will hate you for the rest of my life. Oh. Uh, please. I, I can't do anything anymore. I feel... My legs, my mechanical legs are feeling really? weak. Can, can, can he talk only after permission to talk? Sure, I, I mean, that's quite an easy setting. I yeah. don't want to be here. I hate uh, this place. Oh, adding uh, permission to speak. Give me a cookie. Give me. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's built in. Um, uh, I don't like his eyes, but uh, there is nothing to do, I guess. We have different sets of eyes. I mean, there's a there's a few along the back here. If you just want to choose a color or a yeah, I would like to, him to have a I don't know a red one and an orange one. Oh, cool! Nice. Yeah. I like it. All right, that's good choices. So we got to just program the red eye and orange eye, and um, I'll ask him to respond if that's all right with Ooh. you. Yeah. Okay, and uh, you may respond to your new eye colors. Yeah. <sighs> Perfect. Have a malfunction. Malfunction. I close. Just keep it like this. Keep it like this. Yeah. 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 Great. Well, there you go then. You can just pay at the desk as you go out. This is your new babysitting Android. Oh, perfect. Uh, babysitting? Uh, I hate children. Yeah. And they, <laughs> they always need food. Otherwise, they cry. I can cry too. Yeah. You can stop though. Uh, just stop. Shut up. 
Great. I'll, I'll build shut up as the command and then you can okay. just use that whenever you want and then grant grant them permission to speak and uh, good luck. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I hope you. I hope you enjoy your new Model 5. Yeah. Okay, that can be a problem. Uh, Sarah, I don't like this babysitting robot. Uh, I am sorry, Miss. We are returning the robot. Oh, I just I just came to run some repairs. Are you sure? Yeah. No. What's the the problem we can change the settings if you need he's cold right okay i'll i'll go and um i'll go and take him back right now yeah, i'm so cold. sorry we can offer you a replacement or just come by the office it's, it's that was awkward for a babysitting robot to be cold sarah you, otherwise baby. children are getting spoiled why? Why are our children getting spoiled? I they need it's their nature. They need a real mother, not a robot. Children need to be. I want crisps. Can I have crisps? Yeah, honey. Um, uh, I, no, this is this is something that the yeah. robot should should do. No, no, come on. Thank you. Look. I was happy she was. And I feel good as a father. I gave her chips. No, but I mean, a human cannot take care after children. This is... No, we talked about this when we got... No, 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 no. no, no. The, the, the humanity, we need the robots. Otherwise, we are going to die. We talked about we this. We die? No, 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 honey. No, no, just go not you, honey. No, no, no. Uh, here, uh, I have a new toy for you. <laughs> a little baby Yay. elephant. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> okay, you should we, stop when, when we married, friend. when we married, there were two important things. Everyone is asking that, yeah? Honey, do you want children? You said yes. Second question, do you want to raise them yourself? You said yes. I'm not into no. robots. No, it's, it's, it's not acceptable anymore. I mean, life changed. Call me old school, yeah? Call me old school. I don't want a cold, hateful, complaining robot always about food, that our children are growing up like that. And now this robot, this lady from the robot shop, shop yeah? She has to return it. Yeah, I don't think she will give us our money back. No, I mean, I work there. She's my boss. Yeah, yeah. I love my job. Yes, yes. It's not a robot shop. It's a robot company. It's the only robot company in the world. And if people are not happy with our robots, I'm going to lose my job. I have my notes here. Lorraine, could you come into the office with me for a moment, please? Yes, sure. See you later. Yeah. Yes, uh, I have everything here. Yes. Lorraine, um, this isn't easy for me to say. Um, obviously, you've been working here for a while now, and we are the only robot company in the new world. I, I, it, this makes it even more difficult now that I've learned that you're a real person with, uh, you know, relationships. Um, I'll just come out with it. I'm going to give you a raise. Okay. <laughs> I know it's difficult. It's probably going to change our working relationship. You're probably going to expect more. Um, I'm going to have to notice you more. It's probably going to be annoying for the both of us, but I just oh, needed... It's going to be great. <laughs> and I have to spend less time at home, right? In my yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, I would love you to fully write the speeches. I mean, obviously... I'll be looking at them afterwards and changing things, but I, I think you're a better speechwriter than me. So I'll just give you a few key talking points and you can script them for me. <laughs> That's a 
amazing. <laughs> this is a new uh, a new emotion you've got going on, Sarah. Yes. Uh, well, uh, it was it was already here, but I've never had the chance to feel it, to express it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Do you um do you have any friends, Sarah? Uh, I have my sister and um, some neighbors. Not really, not really. Hmm. Uh, I think I think if it was possible for a human to turn into a robot, I would be the perfect the perfect person for that. Wow. <laughs> That's just the talk. I mean, what an what an incredible piece of research that would be to sort of make you into a bit of a cyborg hmm. but I, I don't know if it, that's is that possible i mean i it, mean it's basically robocop so i'm sure we could do it okay. i i mean i we have a bunch of chips that we normally install in the the androids themselves there's, there's no reason we couldn't use the the vessel your body could just be like the biological organic version and we just put a little chip in there i love organic things <sighs> well you're completely organic so we can put you and an android together okay okay i mean uh, probably you'll need to draw up some paperwork to sign off on something that may possibly go horribly wrong Okay, I can do that. But Okay, well, then that's fine. Just let us know when you're... Uh, I mean, there's a couple of chips just up on the uh, top shelf behind you. You could you cho choose one of our basic models and basically just jam that chip into your head and see how it works out. <laughs> well, I can do it this afternoon, right? <laughs> you can do it now if you want. Uh, how does it work? I mean Eye or ear or nose. Whichever one you want. I'll take another one. Oh, um, gosh. I, oh, oh. That's so, so. I mean, now, now you're like three people. That's going to be difficult. <laughs> I don't know what any of the anger settings are or fear or anything. I mean, maybe you just need to. Oh, God. Um, shit. Uh, oh, uh, um, Sarah, just, just, um, hope you're okay. Oh, God. Um, oh, God. Um, well, I'm the only thing here. Uh, yeah, but don't. No, no. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I see a bone. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> oh, I better go home and show this to my husband. <laughs> I'm a little <laughs> just <laughs> playing hide and seek <laughs> with her <my> daughter. Sophie. <laughs> honey, <laughs> honey, honey, honey. You are acting like a child. <laughs> You're a man child. <laughs> no, no, I'm just a parent. <laughs> Mom, why have you got blood on you? <laughs> Mm. Are you are you okay, Sarah? <laughs> Sarah? I think I want to fly. I want to fly. You want to fly? Yes. Do you want to fly with me? Yeah. Not you, not you, not you. Uh, Your daddy. Sarah, have, have you have you taken something? Some chips. Yeah, we <laughs> talked about this before you 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 are you on pills again mm -hmm. i have a little one here see see you can just... my god <gasps> are you taking chips <laughs> no you don't tell me it's true oh no 
You're on chips. <sighs> Rosaline, Rosaline, you need one of these, honey. Okay. No, Take no, it. no, don't, don't do that. Don't, uh, Rosalie, no, no. <laughs> let's go play hide and seek again, shall we, Daddy? <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's hide Daddy in different places. You yeah. Know, yeah. Body parts no, everywhere. no. <laughs> Don't touch me. The, the, the legs. No, don't come near it. No, no. I've got an arm. I've got a leg. Rosalie, let's go. Play. Yeah. I can with the neighbors. <laughs> and scene. If I come back. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> wow. For, uh, yeah. Robot yeah. Classic robot narrative. Yes. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> thank you so much for that. Good. Yeah, let's have a chat about the improv. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a moment? <laughs> 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 so, Katie, tell us more about your uh, improv journey. Sure. Um, so I did a degree in, in drama and theatre um, a long time ago. So I was already, through my education, I'd al already had a lot of theatre um, and that was very intensive. And we used improvisation as a tool. So um, we had a lot of teachers and trainers um using stuff like devising. I know you've got your Meisner book there. Um, uh, we worked with uh, Toby Jones from uh, Lecoq Complicite um, and lots of stuff like that. So I think, uh, and we used it for character development and things like that, but it was never like a pure form when I was in my sort of 20s at, doing a degree. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of experience around it, but I, I hadn't really dug into it. Um, so after university, I went off, I found the Maydays in Brighton, which yeah. is the group I still play with. Um, and John, who was like running it at the time, he had a drop-in class. So I was like, oh yeah, I loved doing improv. I'll, I'll take this weekly class. Uh, and then became part of their performing team, which had only just begun. Um, and we were doing short form games. Um, but I was really into it and very excited and I wanted to do more. So yeah, my my friend Rachel was like, let's find the best place in the world. <laughs> <laughs> this is in about 2004. Um, okay. And just from looking it up, the, the best place uh, we thought at the time was the best place for improv was Chicago. So we went to Second City and we cool. trained there. Um, and we did musical improv for the first time. And we started learning stuff like sweep edits and basically bits of long form and a lot of short form stuff. But while we were there, we were seeing Improv Olympic, now IO, do some incredible stuff. Um, and, and actually, before we'd been to Chicago, I'd, when I was at the Edinburgh Fringe, I was seeing mm. Baby Wants Candy. So I think yeah. that's, the, which is an improvised musical for anyone yeah. that doesn't know, um, and, and very long form. So I think Baby Wants Candy was the first long form show I'd ever seen. And then when I was in Chicago, I was seeing more like TJ and Dave and lots of other groups of people that are sort of quite famous now. And then I went back there a couple of years later and did the five week intensive. So that's like my training. Um, and then all around that time and th through to now, I just try and learn as much as I can. Um, there's a lot more festivals and things uh, yeah. since then. So it's much easier to travel and learn about p kind of pure long form improvisation. Um, and I, and I still try and learn stuff around improv as well. So like uh, me and my friend Edda signed up to do stage fighting as soon as oh, this, yeah. as soon as we're able to do that in the current climate. Um, the Maydays had a session um, with, with a great movement company and things like that. So there's the core of improvisation, but then I'm always interested in learning around it. Yeah. And I work with lots of different companies and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of my journey. Okay, great. So it's about yeah. 18 years span that that you are doing improv, I guess. And yeah. you have done 
<laughs> lots of shows. I, I've seen one of your shows when you were here in Belgium uh, with Project Two with Chris Mead. Um, mm-hmm. What would be your most remarkable show you still remember? Oh wow! Oh my gosh, that's really hard. Um, I'll I'll just tell you what's in my head. I don't know yeah. if it's the most remarkable, yeah. but um, because you mentioned we did the, a science fiction show in in Belgium, yeah. So some of the stuff I do with Chris in Project Two is, is science fiction. So it's nice to do some science fiction yes. with you. Thank you, um, my love. Uh, but we did a show where we used technology from um, virtual reality so that we could control abstract images on stage live. So we had like sensors on our wrists so we could like throw images up against the wall and rotate them and make them big and small. Um, And the projectors would live project onto our set, but we could move our set around and the projections would stay on them, which was new technology at the time. Um, So it's like being inside a virtual world. Whoa. Yeah. It was live in a theater and the audience could see it all. So that that was like the bleeding edge of technology. And it was only a couple of years ago. And we were a finalist in a theater like awards. Do you have a recording of this show somewhere? Say that again. Do you Is have there... a recording of this show somewhere? We don't have a full show. We've got a trailer which shows you the sort of thing it was like, which I can yeah. uh, send you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I, I really love using improv with technology or in a new way so that I'm being creative and challenged by things. And that's like a good example of that. Yeah. Um, you know, and it took us, we did 13 of those shows in a row, like night after night. Yeah. And, and, and we grew a lot and learned a lot, both in the tech side and the improv side yes. and how they integrate. So that was cool. That felt like a big step up for me yeah. personally. Yeah. I've yeah. heard like Albert told me that you also teach. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I think I'm I'm particularly passionate about that right now, actually. I mean, I really I really enjoyed performing with you both. But I think there's something where we can take a step back and be a little bit technical and analytical when it's on screen in a slightly different way. Yeah. Don't know. It's so, yeah, even more so at the moment. But yeah, I love I love teaching. Talking yeah. about teaching, uh, you have a new course. Um coming up it's i've seen it sold out already it's uh, called the mythic uh, improv journey yeah <laughs> sounds fascinating yeah can you tell a bit more about that of course yeah so first of all it was the most niche weird thing and i was like i don't know if anyone's gonna buy a ticket to this because it's so <laughs> it's what i need and want which is sometimes where my classes come from i'm like i really want to explore this some more and then i can't find it anywhere <laughs> so i have to make it <laughs> um so this this one yeah it's a good way to yeah uh, choose how to teach it in a way um yeah this one's called the mythic improv journey and it's because i'm really interested in well-being mm. i have a, a depression and anxiety so i like to try and find loads of ways to help me cope with those um i'm having a great day by the way it's all good today (laughs) um this is neither depressing nor anxiety i hope so (laughs) it was really nice thank you um so there's that um i'm interested in um sort of uh paganism and the natural world Mm -hmm. um uh, about how really it's really how we relate to nature and what's around us and the seasons and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, story. I mean, all improvisers love story. And then, and I was also wanting an improv class where um, you're not being taught to improvise, where you can just do it and learn from the stories, which we get in shows, which is great. But I think not necessarily everyone always wants an audience. So it's like a place where, we have eight meetings throughout the year, which mark what the sun's doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like the equinoxes yeah. nice. uh, and the and the cross what called cross quarters. So like eight festivals throughout the year. Yeah. Um. So longest day, shortest day, and all the ones in between, equal days and stuff. Yeah. Um. And they correlate with old uh, pagan festivals, like it's basically Christmas and Halloween, but the older origins yeah. of like that and Easter yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah, so what we'll actually do is we'll do a little bit of like, uh, personal investigation. So asking a few big questions for people to meditate on, um, I'll be telling some stories that are relevant to that time of year, mm-hmm. um, about different myths and legends and stuff. Okay. And then we'll improvise based on that stuff and people just Whoa. learn what they learn for themselves and have a nice time. And then we, we reflect on that 
in between and then we meet up again and do the same. So that's what it is. Uh, yeah, and I put it on sale and I was like, this will be so weird. No one will buy it. And it sold out in a few hours. And then yeah. the next one sold out off a waiting list. And now there's there's nothing. So I'm really glad you asked about it. But if you're interested, I don't know what I can do about it. <laughs> Wait until through. next year. Um, yeah. Yeah, because but, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on a particular <laughs> day of the year, yes. you like to do something, you can perhaps do it twice or when the day is over, it's over. Yeah. So. I mean, one thing I was thinking about was just doing a sort of mail out, do your own version of it kind of oh, yeah. thing. So maybe, yeah. who knows, if I sort that out before the end of the month, maybe that'll be a thing. Um, but it's yeah. a great and appealing format and so unique. Yeah, I never heard of something like that before. Yeah, so yeah. it's just great. Yeah, I love it. I think because we're all slightly fractured and we don't have the same connection we normally do, I think we're becoming a bit more aware of what's around us, like the time of year, the time of day, like what's going on with the nature, you know? Yeah. So I think it's a way of, a way of connecting yeah. in a, in a new way, maybe. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I, I do often do classes because uh, yeah, I want to learn more about something. So I'm also teaching um, a class called play like Brene, which is about Brene Brown with, with hoopla. So that that's like taking the ideas of around vulnerability and shame, <laughs> um, <laughs> but like how we flip it, how we how we use our vulnerability and feel comfortable. And it's, it's so improv already, like me just saying that is probably you can relate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, using that as a kind of format for well-being and leading a, a wholesome, happy life kind of thing. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, if, if you have some courses coming up or, or people can register for, just uh, let us know. Uh, and we always like to put a few things on our Facebook page too. Um, and so um, that uh, definitely can be there. Um, yeah, with Chris Mead, you made something special, yeah, called the yeah. Uh, Improv Place. Yeah. Um, so the Improv Place is a, a sort of social hub for improvisers online. Um, and it sounds like we made it exactly for the pandemic, but actually we'd, we'd planned it for quite a long time. And then pandemic happened and we were like, oh my gosh, well, we, <laughs> this is exactly the time we have to press go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what it's, it's very much like Facebook in that we have uh, um, groups and discussions and um, we put daily content on there, like interviews and questions, specific questions around a monthly theme and stuff like that. Um, but it's just a little bit more boutique. Um, and I know some people are leaving Facebook because they don't, it, they find it maybe a bit overwhelming. So it's just a smaller community. Um, and we have classes and stuff in there as well. So it's not, it is a improv school, but that's its main focus is the community side where people can chat about stuff oh, and yeah. learn from each other and yeah. make connections. Uh, yeah. And, and it's a paid thing also, but that's like on purpose. <laughs> so that is like, People who who go there really want to be there and want to use it as a resource. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but also we have scholarships and stuff because we don't ever want money to be a barrier to people True. learning yeah. improv. But yeah, check out the improv place. It's uh, there's a website, the improv dot place, where you can see a bit more detail about what it is and stuff. Okay. Yeah. But I, I love it. It's it's going really well and it's such it's me Chris included, but everyone's found it like this really useful hub and support and way of connecting with people, particularly over the pandemic, you know, and, and this beautiful international thing that's happening with improv yeah. anyway is yeah. sort of magnified in there, which is really nice. Yeah. Is there yeah. anything in improv you, you dream to, to do in the future? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's always, I have a, like everyone does have a, like a note on my phone with a thousand improv ideas on it, you know, like, Oh, let's do this. <laughs> um, I think I, I'm still excited to find formats that work really well, um, on screen mm -hmm. and things that will, will keep going after, after we're all able to see, see and touch each other again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I did one, which was uh, ghost watch, which mm -hmm. is sort of like a live paranormal investigation, which is um, where people get an email beforehand, which says, you know, this is your character, a bit like a kind of murder mystery party where you, you're told who you are yeah. and, and maybe a couple of things that you'll be cued to make happen during the experience. Um, yeah. And then 
everyone just arrives and I'm sort of being a producer and presenter. So we go to the different haunted houses, the different families, and we go to different experts. So that was felt like a really different format. It was online. It was online. Yeah, it was run. It was almost like a class. So it was a show with no audience, basically. Okay. So 13 yeah. people took part in it and they were all being characters in the story. Um, and, and it was very much led by them. I just did prompts to make a narrative happen. Okay. Um, and it got really scary, which is great. <laughs> but I think stuff like that where we're just messing with the format is interesting to me. Um, yeah, I'd love to find something where um, that's, I don't know, I haven't found exactly what it is yet, but I would love to find more things like that online, which feel maybe different. Um, not to not to shit on anything that exists. I love I love being improv online. It's very yeah. cool, and I think it's really nice to keep it in our bodies and and True. practice it. Um, but yeah, I just like to innovate. So I don't know, no no big specific thing, but uh, continue to mess around with stuff for sure. Are you yeah. going to do new um, Ghost Watch uh, events? There'll be one in April at Bristol Improv Theatre, which is quite a long time away. But yeah, yeah, I'll definitely do more. And I might do one where you have the 13 people that are in the like experience and then other people watching. Because we didn't do that before because I didn't know if it would work. Yeah. <laughs> But it did work. Yeah. So now it might be okay to have two types of ticket, one where you can be a character and one where you can just watch. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. I haven't told them that yet. So we'll no. see what happens. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, We are going to post some of your links on our page. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So um, just send us a few things where we, we, we can find you, of course, to go on your Facebook. Uh, is there another way people can find you? Um, or if they want um, to ask for questions or book a course or. Yeah, I mean, the easiest thing is my uh, website, which is katieshoot.co.uk. There's yep. a contact form on there. I mostly keep my classes live and links to all the classes that I'm teaching and stuff and the improv place. That's, yeah, that's probably the easiest place to find everything. Yeah. Yeah. And feel free to DM me or, um, yeah, like I say, you can contact me off the website if you want to, too. I love having nerdy conversations about improv. So, okay. Um, drop good. me a line. <laughs> Super. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll, someone has to write it down. We put it on our Facebook page so they can easily find you back. And, yeah, we have a have a supporter. Yeah. Animal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Aww. Okay. Um, so don't go away, Katie, but we, let's say goodbye to everyone. And bye. Goodbye. And many thanks for watching. And I'm going to try to stop the feed now. <laughs> <laughs> Not always easy. Okay. What's the dog's name? Heisenberg. Oh, good name. What a cutie. Yeah, he snores. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh.